All right, guys, um, just awaiting the FaceTime call now. We ended up having to do that because uh, we're having problems with Skype. So here we go. This is my interview with Bev. Hey, mate. How you going? Good day, Jamison. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, mate. I've just got to fix my settings here. Yeah, no worries. Give me a sec. Here we go. There, there we, we go. go. Beautiful. You got me. How are you? Finally. How are yeah, you going? Good, thank you. Yeah, that's How good. Are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Having a good one. That's good. That's good. Yes. Yeah, so, just a few questions here. I've just, you know, I've, I've loved the Bev show, and I love what you're doing with it. Internet sensation, dare I say. <laughs> So, just for the people who might not know who you are, how old are you and like, what are you studying? Um, 22 years old. Yeah. Uh, just turned 22, actually, yeah, just so a week ago. Happy birthday. Yes, thank you, thank you. And um, studying at uni a arts degree, a no. Bachelor of Arts degree, majoring in journalism. So, um, it all fits in well with what I'm doing. Yeah, that's beautiful, mate. Um, as a kid... Did you dream of playing sport when you grew up or were you more interested in the media side of things? It's a good question. I, I actually wanted to be an AFL footballer yep. uh, when I was playing football. Whoa, you beauty! Yeah, I want a goal! So the media side of things didn't really come into it until maybe the end of high school, maybe in college. Yeah. Um, but I certainly wanted to be an AFL footballer when I was younger. Yeah. I was playing uh, for the Glenorchy Footy Club here in Tassie. I was yeah. no good at playing footy, but um, I really, yeah, I really wanted to play AFL. Obviously, that's not going to happen now. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. Oh, well, mate, that was the same as me. I love my footy, and yeah, yeah. I, was, I played till I was about 15 or 16 and then hung well, up the I boots. Guess we, I, I guess we all do when we're in sports. That's it. Yeah, ball fans, and we play sport. Yeah. Um, we all want to. Yeah, I play at the elite level, but yeah, that's uh, it. it doesn't work out for some. Yeah. When and why did you start making videos? Well, I've always been um, interested in sport and yep. also in front of the camera. I've always been interested in, you know, how they you know, broadcast sport on television and all, you know, how they do the sport shows and all that. It's all been very interesting to me and, um, you know, I've, I've done some YouTube along the way yep. and, and then um, the live stream sort of came about a couple of years ago when I when I did one when Facebook was relatively new to the live yeah. streaming I did one after the after the dogs won the grand final actually yeah. um, did one and actually got a good um, a good response to it so that's how it all started and, and um, yeah ever since I guess then and, and now that I'm doing the best show I've yeah been much more interested in, in it now than what I ever have been yeah well there you go um yeah that doggy premiership that was bloody great Oh, that's yeah. awesome. See, I'm um, from Perth, so I'm a Fremantle supporter, so I yeah. always have, you know, a bit of uh, depression every year because of that. <sighs> However... Um, it'll happen one day, it'll happen one day. Yeah. It might just be like the dogs, you know. Yeah, you maybe. Just, you might just finish seventh or sixth yeah. or, or some odd position and, and come from nowhere in the finals Who and, knows? and yeah. win it, you never know. I reckon the Frio AFLW team will get a premiership before the men's team, I reckon. <laughs> They're doing well this year. I think they've won they four on the trot, three on the trot. Yeah, yeah, in the B conference. I yes, think that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know you love your AFL, so here's a few footy related questions. Um, what is your Brownlow tip for this year? Who do you reckon will win it? Oh, gee, that's hard. But I mean, I'm not really thinking about that at the moment. Yeah. Um, oh, gee. Um, Tom Mitchell won it last year. Did yeah. He's out um, mm -hmm. this year. Oh, gee. Um, Patrick Dangerfield. I don't yeah. know. I really don't know at this stage. Yeah. I mean. Um, who, who have we got? Um, yeah, Dusty yeah. Martin, Dangerfield, Fife. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Max Gorn might actually get one yeah. this year. Maybe he was close a lot, last a lot year. People... Yeah, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. Yeah. A lot of players. Maybe one of the doggies players. Um, we'd like to see Jack McRae or Marcus Bond yeah. really get one. How good was um, McRae's season last year? He was a he was elite, yeah. He's he class, was elite and um, expecting the same from him this year. If he, yeah. can, if he can get going and... Marcus Bond and Pelly can get going. I yeah. reckon the dogs might be a force this year. Yeah. Uh, so how do you reckon the doggies will go this year? Do you reckon top eight, top four? Well, I've been seeing a lot of them, a 
lot of a bit about them on the news yeah. lately. And Bailey Smith, he's one yeah. of the um, one of the recent draftees. He looks impressive. He looks fit, ready yeah. to go. And I think you know most draftees would be fit because they've been training for quite some time now, even before the draft. So um, with him in the side, I reckon if you know Tom Levitore obviously coming back, I'm not sure the Liam Pickens situation, yeah. but um, he'll probably come back. I think he's been training, and and if Jack McRae and Lockie Hunter and, and all that can get going and yeah. you can have a good uh, a good year in the forward line then I think uh, we've got, I think uh, Tim English is going to be the number one run yeah. down at Roughhead is left so I think I actually think they can challenge for top eight I'm not sure if they'll make it yeah. but I, I reckon they'll give it a good crack and I reckon they they might just um, slip in there if they're lucky hopefully there you go so on that note who do you reckon will win the premiership this year because it's, it's a tough race it's tough to call from here eh? oh another tough question yeah. I mean I'm what I mean, I have a little bit of a... I reckon Melbourne after last yeah, year promising. might be a chance. Um, West Coast should be up there again. Um, Richmond, yeah. I would be expecting them. I haven't really gave you an answer, have I? I've just no, given you a couple that's of fine, teams. though. It's I mean, tough. I hope the dogs win. I hope yeah. the dogs win. I mean, I actually think... Um, gee, I think North Melbourne... Oh, yeah. Maybe not a chance for the flag, but might be a top eight chance. Yeah. Um, I don't know about Essendon, but... Um, yeah, it's a hard, yeah. hard one at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, so I've seen on your Instagram you do a bit of um, umpiring down at Tassie. Yep. So how long have you been doing that for and you know, where do you see yourself going with that? Uh, this will be my eighth season, so I'm oh, going around go. again this season. Yep. And um, yeah, it was something, actually it was something that I just started doing after I finished footy. Yeah, there you go. Uh, one of my uh, dad's um, mates just yeah said, come along, and, and it, it went from there and... I've eventually progressed and, and been umpiring uh, the state the state league, which is Tassie's yep. premier competition here for for the last few years now, and and um, so it's all worked out pretty well actually, and, and it's a lot of fun. And there's a lot of teamwork involved, and and you get to um, you get to be a part of you know a footy match yep. without playing, which is um, which is really good, and you get to obviously be fit and stuff. Not sure where I'll go with it um, because I want to obviously progress in my media career. Yeah. I'm obviously going to have to give away one. Um, I don't think personally I am good enough to be making the AFL. Um, so, look, to be honest, I'm probably probably going to be. Um, it's probably not going to be something I'll continue um, in yeah. the long term because of yeah my media career, which I, I want to yeah. go, go further with. Yeah, and on that note, where do you? Where do you want to go with your media work? Where do you do you want to go into commentary or? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just sports broadcasting in yeah. general. I mean, you know, I look at someone like Bruce McAvoy. He does yeah. it all. He, you know, I would like to be him. I yeah. mean, he he, um, he presents the races. He commentates footy. Commentates Olympics. I uh-huh. mean, that's the sort of thing. That's the sort of person. That's the I life, want to isn't be, it? Yeah. The, yeah, the sort of thing I want to do. I mean. You know, that would just be amazing. Or yeah. even just, you know, being on a talk show, like a talk sports show. But, yeah, broadcasting sport is my, my main aim. I want to be broadcasting the sports I love. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully that will happen for me one day once I finish my degree and once I obviously get out yeah. into the workplace, hopefully. Yeah, well, that's actually something. When I first came across your channel, maybe, well, not your channel, your Facebook page about a year ago, um, I showed uh, my dad actually, who you know, sports fanatic as well. I showed him one of your race calls, and he loved it. And he said he reminds me a bit of Bruce McAvaney. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some people humbly, humbly say that I, uh, you know, they say about me being yeah. the next Bruce McAvaney. I mean, no one can be like him. He's yeah. just, I mean, in his words, he's special. But, um, but um, no, it is very humbling when someone says something like that, especially. Of yeah. His stature, I mean, yeah, he's just a, an icon in sports broadcasting. Yeah, that's it. So my next question was actually favourite sports commentator. So I assume it's Bruce McAvaney. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, just yeah, I love seeing him on yeah. the television. I mean, he popped on the screens on Saturday um, at um, at Randwick yeah. uh, on, on Channel Seven uh, when Winks was running, and it was good to see him again. And, and yeah, just love his calls during the footy. Just he does. So well with the sports he broadcast. Yeah. I mean, the recent cricket, I mean, the yeah. interview, that was fantastic. It was, eh? And, um, I would have loved to see him commentate the cricket, but uh, yeah. but yeah, no, definitely him. How much do you follow the cricket? Yippity dippity do you rip a dipper! Follow it a bit. Yeah. Um, follow it a lot. Yeah. Um, as you would know, the Hobart Hurricanes. Yeah. Um, 
follow a lot of the big bash, but I, I do follow you know all forms of cricket. Um, I'm looking forward to the Sheffield Shield resuming this weekend. It's yeah. going to be really good the last four rounds, especially with the Ashes around the corner. Um, yeah, follow the Australian cricket team. I follow I follow a lot of what's what's going on in Australian cricket. Um, yeah. I try to I try to sort of keep up to date with the world cricket. I guess you sort of have to if, yeah. if you um, you know you want to broadcast cricket etc. But yeah, I follow yeah quite a bit. Of, it's one of my favourite sports. So yeah, for sure. So on the topic of cricket, with the Ashes coming up, how do you reckon we'll fare? Well, England um, they didn't go too well no, uh, they didn't. in their recent no. series, so it it gives a lot of optimism. I mean, we haven't beaten them in an Ashes series over there for some time. Yeah. I'm not sure the actual year off by heart, but it's a long a long time ago. And and um, but I mean we. Showed some signs in the Sri Lanka Test series. I mean, Kurt, Curtis Patterson was fantastic. Marcus Harris and, and um, I mean, Kawaj is good in that side, and and Tim Payne's leading that side well. And then, of course, you know, Steve Smith could come back as well as Warner. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm quite optimistic we might do well, especially if England is um, in the form that they're in yeah. at the moment. The ball swings a lot in England, and we don't have that many bowlers that can swing the ball over there. So I'm trying to think which players playing shield cricket at the moment could possibly get a call up. Like Daniel Worrell, he can swing the ball, especially that juke ball, but I'm not sure who, or even if the selectors will pick, a, you know, swing specific bowler for the series. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, Cummins is in good form, so yes, hopefully he, he can take his. His form over there with the the ball and and bat and be able to bowl over there in their conditions, but um, that that's why the Sheffield Shield is going to be so crucial in the last yeah. four rounds, the four few the, the last few weeks because you know people are going to be putting their hand up left, right, and centre to join that Ashes yeah. squad. So um, yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, for sure. The World Cup, the Cricket World Cup. I'm not sure off the top of my head when it is, but it's I reckon it's in the similar boat before as the, the Ashes. Ashes. I think yeah. yeah, just before the Ashes, is it? I think, think it is. I think I'm oh, not yeah. sure if it is. I'm not 100% sure, but it's, I think it's somewhere. It's, it's coming June, up. Maybe? Yeah. I don't know. A few it's some, months away. Sometime soon. Yeah. How do you reckon we'll go? Because we struggle in ODIs, especially yeah. against India, but they're all class. Yeah, it's going to be hard for us, I reckon. Um, yeah, I, I, we're, not, we're not in great form yeah. Yeah, at one day level, are we? And, and I mean, um, I don't believe the selectors really picked the right players, but... Um, or give credit like Darcy Short should be in that side yeah, of the store and Matthew, yeah. you know maybe Matthew Wade and, and, and so forth. But um, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not so optimistic as the Ashes. Um, we're going to have to dramatically improve off our uh, yeah. our recent um, our recent one day series against India. Um, we've got a one day series coming up against India over there, so that yeah. will tell us a bit more, won't it? Yeah, um, will. yeah I'm not so optimistic, but um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can. Uh, improve ourselves yeah. um, by that time. For sure. And you mentioned Darcy Short there. He actually played um, grade cricket over here in Perth for Gosnells yeah. for a few years, and that's the club that I played for. So I know him. I've spoken to him a few times. And nice. Great bloke, great player. Yeah. And just to see where he's come from, from grade level, and you know, shoot up the ranks to yeah. even maybe even in the World Cup squad, um, yeah, it's just great to see. And... I love yeah. how much you love him being a Hobart boy, and you're getting around it, and yeah, yeah just brings I us mean, a lot of joy. I, I mean, I don't just, I mean, I've been like watched him in the One Day Cup yeah. uh, last year when he made that was a double century. Yeah, two hundred and sixty-four. Yeah, I, think. yeah. For, I mean, that's just that's fantastic. Yeah. And I mean, in the Big Bash this year, he has he's taken not only his batting to yeah. well, he's kept it to the same level, if not better, than last season, but he's. He's also gone to a new level with the ball mm -hmm. as well. So he's just, he's, you know, he's so good all round. And yeah. I mean, he should be in that one day squad. I mean, let's face it, he's, I mean, he can, I, I, I legitimately think he can, he can become a test player as well at some point. Yeah, he's I agree. He's and... that good. He's just that good. And um, I mean, we're lucky here in Hobart we've got him in our big yeah, best side. Yeah, for sure. But, um, yeah, to see him in the Australian colours would be pretty good yeah um what are your thoughts on the big bash being extended this season it went for a lot longer than previous years what are your thoughts yep. on that look i personally like the full home and away season i yep. think um i think more games especially hobart hurricane yeah. games is is very good and i like that i like that factor um i like that every team plays each other twice 
I think what Cricket Australia have got wrong is the scheduling. I right. think I think the problem with... The, I don't think the problem was necessarily going too long. I think they just ended it at the right time. I mean... You know, they, they, they've just ended it in February when yeah. people are back at... Like, kids are back at school, parents are... And, and, and adults are back full-time working. Yeah. I mean, we're out of that summer mode now, really, in February. I mean, a couple of Thursdays, last home and away, um, Hurricanes home game, only 8,000 turned up yeah. to that game. It was a 7.30 game, and no wonder kids have to go to school. Mm-hmm. The game's not finishing by 11.30. So, look, I'd like to see next season just start the tournament early December yeah. or, or earlier and, and maybe play a few more double headers and just get it done before before February yeah. starts or, or before the you know, before everyone goes back to work exactly. or before kids go back to school. Yeah. I mean it just makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean yeah, I think it's just the scheduling they've got wrong, I think. Yeah, because sure. you know, it you can't end it when you know, kids are in school because parents are not going to take their yeah. kids to the cricket because it's finishing too late and education's important. Yeah. I'd like to see a Saturday night BBL final too. I think yeah. day Sunday, I don't like. Yeah, well, the, the vibe... I can see the reason for it. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see. Yeah, Saturday night final as well because it just mm. it adds to the atmosphere being a night game. Like the day games. Yeah. I don't know. It just sucks a bit of the excitement yeah. and vibrance out of the game. That's personally, but yeah. Um, I mean, we play we play the big bash games like basically all year, all season night. Yeah. I mean, there's the few day games, um, but um, yeah, I'd like to say a Saturday night or a I don't know a twilight or a six six yeah. thirty. I, I don't know. I just want to know how are you going now mentally with all the stuff that happened. How are you travelling, mate? Yeah, um, going great, going great. That's I good, mean, mate. Um, I mean, these things happen to everyone, I guess. Yeah, that's it. Um, I mean. You know, whatever context, I mean, when you do something like I do, you're yeah. always going to have people bring you down. And I mean, unfortunately, I let it get to me, um, yeah. which, you know, I look back on now and I'm a bit disappointed in that. But in saying that, it was probably good to reflect and just sort of, you know, take the time just to realise yeah. that if you're going to, if I'm going to keep doing this and yeah. if I'm going to keep being in the media circles, that I need to build a. Build a, um, I guess, build a thicker skin and sort yeah. of, um, like, it's, it's okay to, you know, admit that you have mental yeah. problems and we all go through that and I encourage anyone if you're, you know, if you're, you know, battling with that to obviously speak help, uh, seek help and, and speak up and, and stay chatty. But, um, no, it was good to have that time just to reflect and, and yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm really excited to get back into the Bev show this Sunday. Yeah, I mean, that's good to hear, mate. You know, it's my main product on the Facebook page, yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be good, and, and um, I mean, also through that period as well, it just makes you realise how much support you have as well. I exactly mean, as soon right. as that Facebook yeah. page went down, there was so many messages being sent to me. People were just getting behind. It just makes you, it makes you also realise that no one cares about all that stuff. I mean, yeah. there's more to the story, sure. which I won't go into, but there's more to the story than what's been said out there. And, and um, I mean, if people want to sit behind a Facebook page and hate on me without showing their yeah. identity, then they're just making themselves look more like a fool and. Yeah, doesn't really mind me anymore, to be honest. Yeah, that's good, mate. It's good to hear that you're travelling well. Now, yep. you mentioned that your, yep. your show is on Sunday night at, is it 8, 8 p.m.? Yep, every Sunday night at uh, 8 p.m. So 5 o'clock yep. Perth time for everyone that's watching. And, um, yeah, my final question is how would you like to be remembered? So when you're gone, when life's over, how would you like to be remembered? Remembered? Um, passionate. Yeah. Passionate sports fan. Um, I mean... Not only passionate about the Hobart Hurricanes, but I'm passionate about lots of sports in general. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it, really. I don't know what else. Yeah. Um, loves, yeah, loves sport. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a tough question, isn't it? There's a it lot is, in it. it. Is, yeah. yeah, it's something you don't think about every day. But I mean, I, I feel like I'm a passionate person. Yeah. Um, passionate. And I mean, I wouldn't do this sort of thing if I wasn't passionate. I mean, you can't sort of. Yeah, I can't do show if I'm not passionate. Oh, yes. Yippity dippity doo. So, yeah, I think that's probably. Maybe, yeah. Probably the only thing, I yeah. guess, yeah. Well, there you go. Passionate sports fan, Bev, on the Jamo show. <laughs> No, I'm not, I'm not, it's not the Jamo show. I'm taking the piss. But uh, thanks for your time, mate. I That's really appreciate okay. it. Have a good one, and I'll see you Sunday night. Tune yeah, in to the Bev show. Go to the Cakes. There you go. See you, mate.